Okay, welcome to our virtual presentation this morning, coming all the way from Taiwan. After spending a considerable amount of time circling in the air due to travel difficulties from her last conference, we have Diana Yufeng, uh, Yu, Diana Yufeng Yang, mm -hmm. who is an associate professor, and she's going to be talking to us about designing English digital stories for global. So I'm going to hand over to you, Diana. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm very happy uh, to present to you my current research about digital storytelling. And I'm sorry I cannot be physically uh, on uh, Euro call. And hopefully, uh, the virtual presentation uh, would um, help the audience to understand what I'm doing. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk a little bit about the background of my research and then the theoretical framework and then uh, my findings. Um, because there's a rapid growth of digital media multi-model communication of virtual content uh, around uh, the uh, digital space, we are now seeing uh, a growing number of vir uh, visual content on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and so on. And this is a um, statistic done by Pew Research Center uh, 2018, um, telling us how much growth we have had since 2012. Um, and this change has caught a lot of people's attention. And so we can see actually on CNN news, we oftentimes would have a video come with um, words and also images sometimes from Instagram or from YouTube uh, as a content. And therefore in language education, um, just helping students to know words are no longer enough a lot of the researchers has pointed out the importance of multi-model composing in L2 education. In regards to the research that we have uh, already have on video-based multi-model composing, uh, some of the researchers have looking at how to use it as a pedagogical intervention to help the students with their reading, speaking, writing, and listening. Uh, however, another group of researchers have looking at multi-model composing as a new literacy practice, uh, meaning that we are looking uh, not just the language development, but the whole multi-model composition as a text. My research purpose is to explore how English language learners serve as multi-model designers when they work on one type of multi-model composition, uh, which is video-based digital storytelling. And my goal is to help them to reach global audience. And for those of you who do not know what digital storytelling is, it's a type of genre that we often combine with uh, visual content was the text and we recorded as a video to present a specific type of story. It can be community story, personal story, or it can be a filmmaking like story. Um, the other research purpose that I have is to understand how English language learners negotiate and recontextualize the resources that they have in their hands. And those can be culturally and linguistically very diverse. And I'm looking at how they use those in relation to designing, which I'll explain a little bit. And when they are performing intercultural blending, which is reached to the global audience. The three theoretical groundings that I have are literacy as social practice and the multi-literacy view of design and intercultural blending. For literacy as social practice, we no longer see literacy just as a skill to acquire, but we see that as a communicative and a social activities. In other words, the students would be mediating and also mediating 
the community histories of theirs and ide ideologies around the society and also their uh, socio-cultural values when they participate in social activities. In terms of designing, I'm using the New London Group's model of the multiliteracy view of design, which contains available designs, designing, and the redesign. Available designs are the resources the students currently have or the resources that they can reach out, they can find, um, so that they can use it in their texts, whether it's in writing or whether it's, it, it, it is in multi-mano communication. And the redesigned are the new available designs, actually. In other words, they can become a new available design for future uses. Um, so when they um, gather some of the resources and make that as their own to create their own texts that can become a redesigned. In the process, they are engaged in the processing process of designing, which is the act of creating meanings. So they may use red to present happiness, or they may use pink to represent romance. So that's what we mean by designing. During this process, um, there will be a lot of the hybridity and intertextuality going on because we are not only use one thing to represent the other. We are combining a lot of, of different resources and make it something probably different. Uh, for intercultural blending, I'm using Hafner's uh, definition, which means um, how do we combine uh, combine resources in a text that's meant for a global audience to create an intercultural blend. This definition uh, comes from his theoretical model of remix practice for multi-model composition in 2015. And so intercultural blending is how you mix different cultural resources together to create um, a bridge to reach out the global audience. And this is the only one type of remix that he talked about. So now um, I'm going to talk about the city that I con I've conducted. The city context um, is that it was in an undergraduate course called uh, focusing on multimedia and English communication. I had 39 English language learners, including local students from Taiwan and exchange students from Europe and Southeast Asia. Um, it's the, the video-based digital storytelling project is the final project of the course. And students have three to five minutes uh, to, uh, I'm sorry, students have, uh, student have to create a three to five minute collaborative video-based English digital story. And they need to think of a way to reach out their global audience. And the topic I give to them is a uh, culture space. It can be a physical space in the community, virtual space on the word that is meaningful to them, or a metaphorical space that they want to pre represent something. After they are done with their first draft of the video, they actually approach two international students of different regions for peer reviews. And then they rework on their uh, digital story before their final presentation in class. Um, to help the students think more creatively for content development and their composing styles, I actually introduce uh, Gitner 2015 story map to them. Uh, that includes three act structure that we are probably very familiar when we are writing a story. Because in relation to culture space or a physical community space, the students tend to think it as um, a play, um, that they only need to present the facts or the history of, a, of that specific community. And you often follow community, uh, the documentary genres only, and they cannot think of something else. And that's why I introduce this to them. I also um, presented multiple styles of online video-based digital story to them, some of them more serious, some of them much 
more funny and some of them from my previous students. Um, to help them with their technical um, ability and I gave them some guidelines for video shooting and production. So in class, we actually went through some of the basic of camera angles and camera movements. And I also taught them the basics of uh, Power Director and iMovie to help them with video editing. And in this presentation, I'm going to focus on two groups, uh, which include A students. Um, and uh, the first group, um, they are all from Taiwan. The second group, they are all exchange students at the time when I did the study. And I actually collect drafts and final draft of their proposals, of their videos, and I also had their original shots and materials that they use for their, video, their um, digital storytelling. And I actually, I also transcribe their discussion videos with the reviewers and uh, I collect their journal entries, final presentation, reflections, interviews, and so on. Oh, okay. Don't know what happened to my slide, but there was supposed to be um, the first stage, the second stage, and the third stage. Um, for the first stage, I actually was trying to identify the special design of the student's work and to follow and trace what are their available designs. So at that stage, I first look at their journal entries, class presentations, and interviews. And then I match that up with their digital story draft. After, draft, after that, I was trying uh, to um, trace their designing process. And so I went back to their journal entry class presentation interviews again to look at what are the factors that influence their designing process. And I also look at their digital story to see uh, the different drafts, to see how different things got modified. Uh, afterwards, I located the incidents that of interculture blending, which are the designs that purposefully aiming for a global audience. Um, the digital stories these two groups have. Uh, the first group, the title is Home is Home, and it's um, actually situated in uh, Qi, Qishan, which is a place that was dramatically um, destroyed and actually damaged by Typhoon Rock. Um, and so the story actually persuade, portrays a daughter's conflict and negotiation with her father, who insists to stay in Chisha even when he is ill. And at the time, uh, the environment condition was very bad because of the typhoon. Um, the second group had the digital story called Heart Threat. And it is about Kaohsiung Love River. And it's a romantic love story of an exchange student who is mistakenly taken to the Love River because of his miscommunication with a local taxi driver. The first finding um, reported that this two group of students, they employ local resources translocal resources and global resources in their design. So for example, um, the first group actually borrow some of the characters that they often see in their local areas, like a very stubborn father, um, a gossip neighbor, or a scooter rider without helmets, and so on and so forth. And um, the second group also have that. Um, and Something inter interesting to note is that uh, they actually employ some uh, YouTube style in their uh, video. In terms of intercultural blending, I found that these two group of students, they use what I call authentic, uh, authenticizing uh, strategies and playful strategies for culture blending. So um, this is based on 
uh, the analysis of the first group. Um, they were trying to design local authenticity for a global audience so that the global audience can taste the local feel and so that they include the image of local artifacts and local places. They create local characters with traditional values. They also adopt a Taiwanese soap opera genre on YouTube and local languages. In addition, they were trying to make the English more authentic that can represent some of the local values for global communication by modifying a lot of their English subtitles. So from here, we can see um, the student have the local artifacts and local places. Here's the man who was riding the scooter without helmet. This is how the local store looked like. This is how the Buddhist court looked like. This is the local landmark, and this is the local fruit stands. Also, they create um, the local characters who would evoke the traditional values. Um, so this is a daughter who uh, is very traditional in Chinese culture. And she was trying to uh, pra practice what we call uh, failure, uh, fa failure piety, which is xiao, means xiao in Chinese. Uh, it's a Confu Confucius philosophy, meaning that ne you need to respect your parents, follow their orders, and take care of them uh, when they are old, and you need to live with them and um, be with them all the time. So you can see a lot of times the character would say, I just want to take good care of him. How can they be stubborn? I just want to take good care of him. I just want to be a considerate, considerate dollar. They also recycled the Taiwanese soap opera genre on YouTube, which is actually very dramatic and uh, which is, uh, has a lot of conversation of the arguing between two characters. And in order to make it very authentic, they use actually Taiwanese and Mandarin Chinese in their um, video, uh, in the oral narration. So those are Mandarin Chinese and Taiwanese, but they also include the subtitle in English. And let me go back and explain this a little bit. The student actually worry a lot about their oral narration in um, Taiwanese and Mandarin Chinese because they thought that foreigners may not understand them or their global audience may not understand it. So they actually struggle a lot whether they should include this or not. But they found that if they are saying it in English, it just doesn't fit with what they want to say or what they want to show to the global audience of what was going on because the sound of the language actually make a big difference. After they worked with their um, reviewers, they found, oh, it's actually okay. Because in a lot of the foreign movies, they also use the local language. But if they can make the English subtitle very authentic and evoke the meaning that they would like to show, they, that wouldn't be a problem. So in that situation, they make their translation uh, actually very local and very to the point, like I'm your father instead of don't you see me as your father. In terms of the other group, they use a lot of playful strategies. Uh, for example, they have a very humorous but illogical YouTuber styles. And this is actually what they call as a taxi driver, but he was riding a scooter. And so it was very funny and it caught a lot of people's attention. And they thought it was very catchy so that um, just like the YouTube, the YouTube YouTubers and they would make things very fun and uh, um, so that they would have the attention of um, their audience. The other one is that they use a lot of language plays like 
um, heart, what does heart means in this text message? Oliver, there have been mistaken in the paperwork. Your heart is perfectly fine, no need to come. So the heart here means your, your heart, your heart in your, your body. But they also have, I'm really happy, I follow my heart today. So there's a lot of this heart, love, shape of heart and things like that come together as language place. All right, so um, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to quickly conclude. So my findings suggest that my students actually use local, translocal, and global resources in their designs. And they employ uh, what I found um, authentic ties-in uh, strategies and playful strategies for the intercultural blending. And I think that in this sense, uh, we need to think about uh, the influence of social media in multi-model composing, and also the multi-model roles of language hybridity in multi-model composing, like the re remix of different languages, some in oral language, but some in written, and what different kind of um, chemical reaction it can create. Um, also, the role of language play in multi-model composing, and those might be some of the areas we can look in the future. All right. That's all for my presentation. And those are my references. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Diane. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I've been tweeting as we went through as well. And thank you. It, it kind of, the work that you've done kind of points to some of the things we were talking about yesterday. And um, Claire Cramps brought up in, in her presentation context collapse. Mm -hmm. Uh, very interesting. Oh. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. I'm going to mm -hmm. switch you. off the recording. Um, okay. But if anybody would like to ask you a question, um, maybe they mm -hmm. could do it through Twitter. Do, is there a way of connecting with you or following up questions? How would you like uh, us to contact you? Uh, sure. I, I do have a, a Twitter account. I will need to uh, try to log in, though. I haven't used that for a while. Um, but I probably can send it over to you afterwards. Great. Or okay. I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll add the details to, or you know, if there is some other way that you wish people to get in touch, you're interested, um, just let me know, and I'll add it to our blog post on the virtual strand. Because the Q and A so section is the one thing that we're missing here. So thank you very much, and thank you for doing <laughs> a great job on your presentation.